Well, thank you folks for coming today. Welcome. Um, it's great to see your faces as always. Um, we just want to say thank you and we're privileged that you, uh, you've chosen to be here instead of anywhere else on this miserable evening weather-wise. Uh, and for you online, thank you for joining us. We hope that um, you're blessed. Uh, we want to thank you as well that um, you've chosen to actually participate. Um, we're one big happy family, so make yourselves at home. You can sit, as always. You can stand. We do encourage you. Um, you can clap. I know, I know. Hold your breath. You can clap. Um, but um, let's take a moment. If you'd like to stand, please do join us. We'll, uh, we'll start the, uh, the service. Father, thank you for you bringing us here together. Lord, we honor you. We glorify you. We want to give you all the praise and all the thanks. In the name of Jesus, and everybody says... Amen. All right. Here we go. I was buried beneath my shame. Who can carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. On my fingers I tried to hide. Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name To your glorious day. Hey! Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. Jesus, when I met you, Cause when you called my name, I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness. To your glorious day. Hey! I need a rescue. My sin was heavy. Chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter. I was an orphan. You called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. When you called my name, I ran out of that grave, Woo! out of the darkness, into your glorious day, out of my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. All right, have you guys warmed up now? Have you warmed up the vocal cords? I uh, need you to take a moment, say hi to somebody you haven't seen for a long time. Don't touch them, just give them a friendly wave. <laughs> When 
you called my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You 
give you all the praise, Lord. Lord, by your stripes, Lord, you've broken every chain, Lord. Lord, that we are called your children, Lord God. We just want to say thank you. We honor you. We give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord. Oh, no. 
Praise God. You can give him a round of applause. Do you believe it? That we are children of God and we are free. Please take your seats and turn your attention to the screen. Hey Axis and welcome to another edition of This Is Our Family. This is a place where we get to connect, communicate and celebrate all that God is doing in the life of the church and in, within Axis, within the community and beyond. So a special welcome to you if this is your first time joining us. So Isaac, how's it been? It's been good. I'm going awesome. I'm excited. This is my first time filming with Joe, so I'm excited to see how it's going to go. i um, excited for the new year. It's going awesome. Had a family Christmas breakup party recently, so that was really exciting. Yeah, just looking forward to the new year. The Christmas season is here. So, Isaac, youth is now finished for 2020. You've been looking after it for the last term. How's it been going? Yeah, it's been really good. We just had our um, graduation where we got to release Georgia and Ashley, so that was Woo! super exciting. We had an awesome fun time doing that. So last weekend, XY, we're at the Bunnings Barbecue mm -hmm. doing a fundraiser. I want to just do a shout out to all those that came down Woo! and bought some sausages and also to those who helped out. Really appreciate all that you awesome do. Awesome job. Cool. What else happened last weekend? Yeah, that's right, Joe. Last weekend, we also had the men's breakfast and there was a huge turnout for that, which is really exciting. We had a guest speaker, Scott Bowden, that came and talked about the empowerment dynamic, which that was really awesome. We also want to send out a huge shout out to Nick and Paul. They've just done an amazing job leading the men's ministry over this 2020 period. Well done guys, golf clap for you boys, awesome job. So Joe, what else is happening? Well, you tell me Isaac. So, there's been an exciting new development. We've got the new signage outside Yay. on the street, which is awesome to have that. We've got the actual correct information on there now, which is exciting. Sure is Isaac. Well, this year has turned out to be a stressful year for many, and part of those stresses is the strain on marriages. And so as a church, we've been looking at possibly starting an alpha course next year for families and for marriages and to honour one another and to honour God through our marriages. And so over the next few weeks and starting today, we are going to um, have an interview with some of our married couples in the church. So right now we're going to have a look at what Pastor Jono and Yvonne have to share with us. And marriage is really tough and it's undervalued in our culture how important a healthy marriage is. Mm -hmm. um, you're bringing together two people with different backgrounds, different expectations, different personality types and sparks are going to fly in that process. And uh, But because of that and because we understand the challenges of that, we've mm -hmm. tried to, in our marriage, develop rhythms mm -hmm. that are regular that help mm -hmm. serve our, us having a healthy marriage. Uh, there's three things that we focus on mm -hmm. regularly. Uh, the first thing is having a weekly date time mm -hmm. just to connect and it doesn't have to be an expensive restaurant. I mean you can't do an expensive restaurant every single week <laughs> um, even though we might like that. It's not possible. So, But just that connection time, that point of, of really checking in with each other because mm -hmm. in the busyness of life that connection can easily be lost. So. We also like to talk about our scheduling once a week and that helps us get on the same page. Um, which is interesting to do at times. <laughs> but just our expectations of what we're looking at, what our responsibilities are, and so we could share the burden if possible in different areas. And also to, yeah, just to plan some fun uh, activities and um, some household chores as well. So yeah, that really helps us um, you know, commune together and to draw closer to each other. Hmm. It may seem at first very, um, business-like. You know, when we first started doing it, I remember Jono saying we need to discuss our scheduling and I just thought this is so business-like, but it's really helped 
us and having um, you know, any types of arguments or discussions at the end of the week of what I thought the week should look like. Mm. It's trying to manage expectations and get on the same page because if you wait till Saturday to find out that I was going to go to the footy and Yvonne thought we were going to do gardening, <laughs> then that's a really big conflict. Whereas if that can be discussed early in the week, some of the stings taken out of that. Mm. We've also um, tried to maintain marriage mentors throughout the different seasons of our marriage. It's really important to have people cheering you on in your marriage. We've had some challenging times. We've lost two babies along the way um, and different things that just happen in life. And, and having people that have been on the road a little longer and are cheering you on um, is so important. We've really valued those couples that have built into our relationship in that way. Yeah, absolutely. I think too, having different mentors for the different seasons, but also for different aspects of your life, whether you see a couple that you admire, the way they interact and respect and honor each other, and you're like, yeah, we want to include that more in our life, our marriage life. We'll go ahead and spend some time with them, or we see couples the way they're raising their young or even older children, and we admire those things and we will then um, we don't necessarily go some of them we do say hey can you be our mentors but some of them were just intentional on meeting up with them and connecting with them um, so that's been really helpful for us it's also been helpful to um, get together with couples that have similar personality types and Jono being the planned person and me being the spontaneous one um, even we've seen it opposites where maybe it's the wife that's more like Jono's personality and the husband's more like my personality it's helped me to understand how to relate to my husband at times um, so yeah that's been really helpful and fun <laughs> Just a quick reminder church, over the next few weeks in the lead up to Christmas, we've got the pantry and the foyer there for the Anglican church doing the pantry stuff there. So we just want to encourage you that as you're doing your shopping, slip an extra item in there or two and bring it into the church. We want to make this cupboard overflow for them. So that'd be a super exciting opportunity if you want to be a part of that. Yes, and guys, if you are available on Christmas Day, don't forget there's an opportunity to also help out at the Lakes Anglican Church. They're going to be feeding the community on Christmas Day. So if you'd like to join, Pastor Jono and Yvonne and the girls and be a part of that, that would be awesome too. Also, Christmas is right around the corner, so we want to encourage you to book to get into those services. We're going to have one service on Christmas Day at 8.30. Christmas Day falls on a Friday, so we will continue to have our Saturday night service and our Sunday service as per usual. But if we are full at 8.30 on Christmas Day, we will also add a 10.30 service. So book in as soon as you can. So church, you'll find the details down below of how you can partner with us financially. And just a quick reminder that if you have your cash, there's three boxes in the church that you can give after the service or before the service. We really appreciate your generosity and giving during this time. So just before we move into our message, which is on Christmas is a time for freedom. Freedom! We are going to have a look at this new exciting feature of This Is Our Family. And we're going to cross over to Adventures with Peacock. Woo! What does Christmas mean to you, Jane? Everything. Family, Everything. food, fun. Presents? Yeah. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. Christmas means getting together with your family. Um, it's a time of celebrating with my family. Awesome. Presents? Food? Um, definitely the food. My granddad's from Austria. So. Wow, food is good. So what does Christmas Day look like for you guys? You're chilling at home, going to the beach, driving around, what are you doing? Usually chilling at home, chilling, watching Christmas movies, eating food. Well, I'm actually a pagan, so I don't celebrate Christmas. Yep. I celebrate it for the grandchildren only. But for me, it's a time of getting the family together and just being being in the, in the time. Awesome, that's such a good answer. That's so good, Dee. What does Christmas mean to you? Presents. Food, people, and the birth of Jesus Christ. Wow, wow, that's impressive. I'm so sorry to interrupt your date, I'm so sorry. Can we ask you a quick question? All right, what does Christmas mean to you guys? Um, spend time with family. How much money are you spending on it this, this year? Uh, I don't know, we'll see. Oh, have you asked for anything yet? No. <laughs> no? Still don't have an answer? What do you guys do on Christmas Day? Go to the beach, hang out with family, what do you do? Uh, I used to have a family barbecue. Oh, perfect. Um, I usually have like a family roast. Awesome. All right, I think that's it, guys. Thank you very much for your help. Enjoy your afternoon. Christmas. Oh, my goodness. This is uh, Christmas. We usually do family, um, but this is the first Christmas that we away from home and yeah. stuck away. So, yeah, we're spending it. We're going to go camping and we're just going to awesome. enjoy the outdoors. So Christmas cool. is about togetherness and it's about family and yeah. some food. Yeah. What's your favorite Christmas food? food? <gasps> trifle. Do you know what trifle, trifle. is? Trifle. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 
My grandma makes the best trifle ever. That's awesome. We've just got a natural Jono in his habitat. If you just pan over to there, there he is. Look at him. In absolute awe and glory. Actually, Christmas is not my classic traditional yeah, festival. Awesome. Yeah, but um, I can feel it so good here because um, they start the decoration, anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just helping out others. Helping out others, that is so cool. Anything else? Does it look different in the COVID season for you and your family or no? Uh, only just because obviously we come from another country, so no family can fly in under any circumstances. Yeah, we've heard that a bit. All right, what does Christmas mean to all of you guys, second time around? Uh, Jesus' birth. <laughs> I don't know what I <laughs> Yeah, same. Same, same answer. Nice, escape the question. Second time around? Um, God, Jesus. God, Jesus. <laughs> God, Jesus is always the answer, though. That's a good cop-out answer. <laughs> so any presents we got in mind? Has anyone got boyfriends? No? you got to ask them for, like, really expensive presents. No, this is the singles ministry? Yeah. Uh, fun for the whole family. Presents? Yep. What does Christmas Day look like for you? Uh, big lights, uh, awesome presents, and uh, yeah, just a lot of uh, video games. Video games, love yeah. it. Have a great day, mate. Right. Woo! I'm late. Hey, guys. Now, I have to ask your forgiveness because normally when I get to talk to you... Oh, there I am. Hello. I'm a bit late. But normally when I get to talk to you guys, I don't look at my notes because I get all distracted by them. But tonight what I'd like to do is ask your forgiveness because I am going to look at my notes because when I was preparing for this, and I always love getting to actually talk to you guys, um, because preparing to say what you believe in front of a bunch of people is a really good time of narrowing down on what on earth you believe about something, right? And so I always love the opportunity. So first of all, I want to thank you and all the lovely rostering people and Jono for having a holiday because I get to come up and do this for you, right? And before I start, what I should say is I want to say a big thank you because we still have lots of people that are coming right down the barrel of that camera and checking in on what we're doing here at Access every Sunday. So hello everyone online. Make sure you're chatting and talking to everyone and using the uh, chat function in the stream. Um, welcome to Access. Guys, Christmas is a time for freedom is the fun topic which I was given. And I don't know about you, but I actually feel like, I, before I started, I felt like I knew a lot about freedom. As Christians, speaking mainly for those who've already made a commitment, which is probably most of the people in the room and watching online, we probably generally feel like we've got what this freedom thing is about. We know that Jesus and what happened is about freedom. But I want to talk to you a little bit about it. I want to have a look at some things that will help us remember. I want to have a look at some things that maybe we haven't thought enough about recently. So you might think you know all the answers, but I want you to approach all of this with an open mind. Okay. And I also want to ask you to excuse me because I use a lot of Bible references. <laughs> so there are going to be lots up there, but I won't read all of them. But I'd love for you to actually go back and look at these in detail and look at them in context. Because um, we actually don't have time in half an hour to do the sort of depth of some of these stuff that we're opening up that I'd like to. It's really hard to come to Christmas without thinking about Jesus. The picture of a manger and Mary and Joseph and Bethlehem and all that stuff. It's almost impossible in modern westernized world to think about Christmas without picturing that scene. I'm a little bit sad to say that even as a Christian, I often don't think about that enough. Isn't it a little bit sad that we come to Christmas time and it becomes really obvious to us, it comes front of mind again? I'd like, to, I'd like to be better at focusing on the fact that Jesus came and was born and had a life and had a ministry and died on a cross and was resurrected. I don't think about that enough. And Christmas is a time where it sort of narrows our thinking down a little bit. It really gets us to focus on that. The, thing that, the reason I'm sad is that really shouldn't, as Christians we be totally about Jesus all the time. It's in the name. 
we, are, we should be about Jesus. We should be thinking about this amazing story all the time and focusing on it. Now, in the modern age, in the Western world, this time of year, we're really lucky because we get to talk about the birth of Jesus. But it's also really hard in modern society not to be distracted by all the other things that are happening at Christmas time. We get carried away. We heard some of the other people. We get carried away with the idea of presents, with shopping lists. I've got one on my phone with a tick box for all the people and what I'm getting them so I don't forget someone. We get carried away with decorating and family engagements and planning time away and holidays and camping and celebrating school finishes. I want to give, like for instance, Lily, my Lily is 11 and she's just finished grade six. We're super proud of the young lady that she's become. But she's leaving her primary school and going to high school. And so our time at the end of this year has all been about graduating primary school. We've done events and graduations and parties for this and a pool party for this and I'm never going to see you again. Right? That's all that this year has felt like it was about, the end of this year. And I can tell you that I'm very proud of her, but if I have to go to another graduation thing, I'm going to be a little less proud. It has just overtaken the end of the year for us. But isn't it easy at the end of the year to focus on something other than Jesus? And I'm not saying be anti-Santa or anything like that. I'm just saying it's really hard to... It's really easy, sorry, to lose focus. The reason we should really be getting excited about Christmas is because we're celebrating Jesus' life. What his life means in the broader story of God's mega story with you and me. We read a bit about it in the Bible. But we know that Christmas is something special. We know it's significant. In fact, it may actually be the most significant moment or time to remember in the whole of human history. The thing is, Jesus was talked about for hundreds of years before he actually showed up. There were many prophecies to the nation of Israel about this, and, and they were anxious and expectant for a Messiah to come, a saviour to come. Isaiah 61 1 says this, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release them, a release from darkness, the prisoners. The thing is that when Jesus stood in a temple and read that and said, hey guys, I'm here, right? It really wasn't what they were expecting. They were expecting something very different. They were expecting and they were excited about a coming Messiah, but it wasn't this Jesus bloke. But I can tell you what it was. It was a hope of freedom. A hope of freedom is what the Israelites back then were wanting and what us, when we reflect on the birth of Jesus, can get out of his birth and life and the stuff that he did. The thing is, they knew that God's kingdom was coming. God's Freedom was coming. There was going to be a removing of restraint. There was going to be a removing of obstacles. There was going to be lifting of burdens. There was going to be seeing of God's glory realized. Seeing God's kingdom come to a reality. Seeing God's kids, you, me, blessed. They knew freedom was coming. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. We've heard it in the Christmas carols. Now the thing is, the Israelites were thinking this freedom, they were thinking about it in a very nationalistic way. They were expecting 
that there was going to be freedom from someone else living in their land. They thought there was going to be freedom from someone else's rule. Now, the Romans had moved in at the time of Jesus, and they weren't too happy about that. They wanted freedom from them. They also believed that when the Messiah came, there was going to be a removal of sickness and pain, and that there would be a king who would sit on a throne and rule over the world with authority and power. That is the Messiah that they were expecting. Now, remember that the Israelites share a common backstory with us as Christians. They study the same Old Testament. They knew something special was coming. They just didn't realise what was actually on the table for them. They didn't actually realise that, in fact, this Jesus in the manger was the Messiah and the Saviour they were waiting for. So if they didn't get it quite right, let's talk about what freedom do we actually get from this baby, his life and ministry, death, resurrection. What is the freedom that us as Christians enjoy? I've got some ideas for you. Free from fear. Free to have the Holy Spirit. Free to talk straight with God. What about free from loneliness? What about free from rejection? Free from self-doubt. Free from blame. Free from punishment. Free from the unknown. Free from guilt. Free from conditions or deals or what-if statements. Free to be close to God. Free from comparison to others. Free to be heirs to the kingdom of heaven. We're also free not to be with God. And free to be with God. We're free to sin. And free not to sin. We're free. What I want to talk to you guys is I want to narrow in on a couple of them. Freedom from separation from God. Isaiah 59.2 says, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he doesn't hear you. Now, I know you guys know this, but I want you to turn off your I know, this, I know all this stuff, Tim, brain for a minute and really think about what we're saying. I want you to reflect on this idea in the context of the freedom that Christmas brings. The freedom that God's made real through Jesus and what he did for us. Now, you know this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give us a reminder. Right? In the Garden of Eden, here we are, right back at the beginning of the story. Unfortunately, we were separated from God and we lost connection. God takes two humans and says, okay, guys, all this stuff is yours, but not that bit. A snake shows up. We know this is Satan. Tempts Eve. She eats of the tree God said not to. And humans deviated from what God wanted. A separation began. This divide that was created back then has a lasting effect for us as humans. Even today, Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God is perfect. And unfortunately, that means for us we don't get to see eye to eye. We know that God loves us. We know that sin gets in the way of that. And we're unable to really know God personally, intimately, because of sin. Because of the stuff that God isn't about. Gets in the way. And 
I find such sadness in the concept that that is a life unfulfilled. That is a life not at its potential. That's a life disconnected from its real purpose. How sad it is to not be, create, not be connected to the creator of the universe. Right? The one who changes history and makes miracles happen. Luckily for you and me, enter the Saviour Jesus. Time and time again, the New Testament is filled with verses that tell us that because of what Jesus did on that cross, we're free from any limitation. We're free from the limitation that our sinful nature puts on us, between us and God. All the barriers between us are destroyed. Gone. There's actually nothing there with any power between us and the creator of the universe having a personal one-on-one relationship. Colossians 1.22 luckily agrees with me. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. The cool thing is it's now that we can receive the Holy Spirit. We can actually have God dwelling inside of us, talking with us, interacting with us, being personal with us. It's like the ultimate life upgrade. And it's free. Now, if I stopped there, packed up and went home, isn't that enough? Isn't that exciting? Isn't that a great story? Isn't that an amazing outcome? Free upgrades. Everyone gets one. But I think there's more we can learn about freedom at Christmas. What about freedom from the law? In preparation for this, I felt like I needed to look at the book of Galatians. Now, if you haven't done so, I want to. It's only eight. Uh, sorry, it's only six chapters long. So I'm going to encourage you to sit and, in one sitting, read Galatians. Instead of scrolling on Facebook for an hour, read Galatians. I'll tell you that Martin Luther actually is quoted as saying that Galatians is my epistle. I am. I have wedded it to myself. I love that guy. It's mine, he says. I love it that much. The book is almost entirely about the concept of freedom. In the book, Galatians, in 5.1, it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It's well worth a read. So you have to do it. That's your homework, okay? (laughs) Thanks, Caitlin. (laughs) Galatians 2.16 says, Know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of law, because by the works of law no one is justified. No one is made okay. The whole of Galatians by Paul is a book that is focusing on the concept of freedom. He talks about freedom from our previous sin and bound to the stuff that God's not about. He talks about freedom from bad habits. He talks about how those bad habits disconnect us from God. And he encourages his read- readers to know that by, because of what Jesus, Jesus did, they're Free. They're not bound by the law anymore. They're now free to eat whatever they want. They're now free to live without being circumcised. 
living by the law was not the focus anymore. Now, when I looked at that, the word law is something that doesn't really connect with me. Because we're talking about Hebrew traditions and a law that was been with the Israelites for hundreds of years. And I struggle, struggle to reconcile what that means for me in Australia, 2020, dad of two kids, 30, whatever I am now, eight-ish, I think. I always forget. So how do we take this idea that Paul's talking about and make it real for you and me today? And when I was reflecting on this, I, wanted to, I ended up asking myself some questions. What law do we impose on ourselves and others? Is being financially well off a barrier we make for ourselves? Or for other people? How about things like church attendance? The clothes that I'm wearing? My interests? Are they barriers that I put around connecting with God for me or my expectation on other people? The thing is, church, we have to stop that. It's not biblical. Paul is here really directly telling the, the people, his list, the readers, that those people who tell you there's a bunch of hoops to jump through to be okay with God are wrong. Don't listen to them. In fact, it goes further to say that those people that rely on that stuff are going to be really disappointed because they're going to fail. You cannot get free from the law. You cannot get freedom from following a bunch of rules. Romans 8, 1-4. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Because God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in his likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So what does that mean? No rules. Yes! I'm a nonconformist. I only wore jeans because I felt bad about wearing shorts on camera. I know, they're ugly knees. I get it. But does it mean no rules, guys? No way. Does it mean we, get, we can do whatever we want? It doesn't. The thing is, the New Testament writers knew that we would be saying that. Because <laughs> they knew that you were going to read that and go, yes, no law. Free time. There are numerous times in the New Testament where we are told... That just because we don't have to follow the law, as declared in the Old Testament and the Torah and the teaching of the Israelites, the thing is we're still guided by our love for God. In 1 Corinthians 10.23, it says, I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I also have the right to do anything but not, not everything is constructive. The thing is, we don't want to obey God because we get anything or because if we don't, he's not going to like us anymore. We want to obey God because we love him. We learn in Hebrews 10 that when we accept Jesus into our lives, there's actually a new law that's written on our hearts and in our minds. Hebrews 10.16 says, 
I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. And then he adds, their sins and lawless acts. I will remember no more. And where, and where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. We've learned that what God wants, and we, have, we can see what God wants and his heart through the whole of history between God and us. He's shown us what delights him. He's shown us what his will is. He's shown us his hopes for the human race. And it's right throughout the Bible. Now, as I love God, trust him and recognize his rightful place as the perfect father, won't I want to do those things that delight him? Won't I listen to his recommendations and his requests of me? The Bible tells me that if I'm really a child of God, I'm going to. So not do I have a bunch of rules I have to follow. I am free from them. What I have to do is love God, which means I want to make him happy, which means I want to do what he loves. That means I'm going to listen when he says, if you want to have the best kind of life there is, this is how you do it. I'll go, all right. No question. I want to think about my kids because really we're God's kids. And the cool thing about being a dad is they teach me a hell of a lot about me and God. When they do something I told them not to do, why do they do that? I've come up with a few reasons. I'm sure there's more. They either think that they know better than me, because what does dad know? Right? Right? And I'm a kid. My dad doesn't know anything either, so I get it. <laughs> I hope he's watching. Love you, Dad. <laughs> They've decided to let something else tell them that what they're doing is a good idea. They've put input from another place as more important than mine. That's another reason that they're just doing what, not doing what I've asked them to do. Or they could be doing it because they want to be in control. They're defiant. You're not telling me what to do, Dad. I'm going to do it my way. And we're exactly the same with God. They're the same reason we don't do what God wants. We think we know better, or we want to be in control, or we've let something else convince us that his way's wrong. This ultimate thing and the center part of all of this and the center part of sin is a selfishness and a desire to be in control. We want to do it our way. We want to be our own boss of our own life. Because of what that baby Jesus went on to achieve, we are free from rules and a law that is impossible to meet. We're free to love God and to live in a way that honours him and loves him. And we're, uncon we're uncontrolled by some unattainable set of rules that will leave us sad and unfulfilled and definitely not living our best life. The last thing I want to focus on for us is we're also free from being stuck in sin. I mentioned this before when I was talking about Galatians 5.1. It says this, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again against by a yoke of slavery. Don't be stuck in your old ways. Paul is super direct here in his writing. The life you had pre-Jesus, it's gone, skis. God has even gone so far as not remembering it. Why are you remembering it? 
In another part of the Bible, it talks about us being washed whiter than snow. Blameless in God's sight. In fact, as Christians, when God looks at us, he sees his son, Jesus. He's got Jesus goggles on when he looks at all of you beautiful people. We have inherited the perfect nature of Jesus in God's eyes. We're seen as righteous, with no need for punishment, no need for sacrifice. We're totally covered. Done. Bill's paid. Paul is reminding his readers here that they've been saved and that they do not need to be burdened again by the things they're saved from. Paul often asks his readers to stand up, stand firm, continue the good fight, stay faithful. Remember in Hebrews 10 it said, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. The reality is that we need to live like we're not controlled by sin or our sinful desires anymore. We need to start to live like we're actually seen, blameless in God's sight. How many of us are holding on to life's failures? How many of us reflect on what we've done as Christians in our walk that's not what God wanted? I'd say it's pretty regular for me. And that's not God's plan for us at all. That sort of reflection on past wrongs looks at what Jesus did on the cross and laughs at it. It makes it seem like it has no worth. What happens if we really start to live like people who are totally righteous in the eyes of the creator of the universe? You know, life is stinking hard. And our journey towards and with God is sometimes slow. Sometimes it goes in reverse. (laughs) Other times it's full throttle, 100 k's an hour in the right direction. What I want to do at this point is I want to draw a little picture for you. And we're going to see how this works. Because technology is not normally our friend. Yeah. And this is an analogy that I use and it helps me remember what I'm talking about when I'm talking about journey with God. Let me give you an example. This is God in the middle. Unfortunately, the Garden of Eden happened. And so we got a barrier. I'm going to call this barrier sin. You're not allowed to pick on my drawing, right? Look past the bad drawing. And I'm going to put another barrier around here. And this is going to be guilt and punishment. What are some of those other things we said we're free from in our big list? Yell them out to me. Comparison. Comparison. Great. What else? Anyone else? Fear, thank you. Other things? Great, thank you so much. Now, how do you spell loneliness? You know what? Can I put spelling? No, that's cheapening in the diagram. Guys, what I want to say to you is that, see, this here is me. 
And without Jesus, what I do is I move further away from God and closer to God. And my journey does this. But look, there's always a block. This is what Jesus does. First thing he did is he said, sin. I got it, guys. There it goes. Don't worry about it. We're now able to connect with God. There's no barriers left. So I'm still flying all around the place. But look, I can get all the way to God. But sometimes when my journey gets really bad, I remember all this stuff. And I still feel contained. What does God do? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's gone. That doesn't change the journey. I still go in all sorts of directions. I still stuff up. I still remember my previous thing. And you know what's really important? It's just I have a choice right through the journey to turn it around and start heading back to God. God says it doesn't really matter how far away you are or how big your mistake. You've got a choice. Just turn it around. Be pointing in the right direction. That's all we have to do is point in the right direction. Because all the other stuff, he's handled it. We're actually free. Christmas is a super exciting time for celebration. We cannot, however, make the same mistake that those who were around when Jesus was born in the manger at Christmas that we remember, the same mistake they made where they forgot what it actually meant. Since the beginning of time, God has been advertising a free giveaway. Doesn't even need steak nights. The Bible tells this story cover to cover. Christmas is a time of celebration. Christmas is the final realisation of God's plan for freeing human beings from the slavery of pain and sin and doing stuff that does not let us live our best life. We are living life not to its potential, consumed by substantial relationships, substandard love, substandard support, a substandard purpose and joy and peace. There is a free upgrade for everyone. (laughs) There's just a small fine print. Love me back. The baby in the manger at Christmas is the key to freedom. Jesus opens up the door of heaven to a life that's truly realized, that reaches its full potential. The key is love ultimately expressed as a sacrifice and a payment and undeserved punishment that Jesus took on for us. And the reward for you and me? Freedom. Absolute freedom. Let's sing together. triumph over the grave sing hallelujah the battle is won nothing can stand against our God would you rise to your feet and sing this together the dark tried to hide you and steal you away And 
death tried to keep you inside of the grave. The enemy fought you, he tried but he lost. You cannot be stopped. When we cried for freedom, you told on the walls. The weight of our burdens, you carried it all. Our fears and our failures hang dead on the cross. You cannot be stopped, mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won, and nothing can stand against our God. Oh, we stand on your victory and shout on your praise. Miracle maker, you're mighty to save. You're awesome in power, relentless in love. You cannot be stopped, or mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. For nothing can stand against our God. Mover of mountains, mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing. There is nothing. Do you believe it? Oh, oh, there's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing. There is nothing, mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. And nothing can stand against our God. Mover of mountains. Breaker of chains, Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Nothing can stand. You're the breaker of chains.
Guys, I, uh, I've asked them just to continue to play music at the end of our time together tonight. And if something that we've said tonight has touched your heart and you would like to talk to someone about it, I would like you please to feel free to do that. If you are online and watching this, there is a comment section. Please reach out to someone. If you don't feel like you know what that freedom feels like, you have the opportunity to. Um, And there's people here that will love you and want to talk to you about that some more, if you'd like to. Let's ask permission to pray for us now. Let's pray as we close our time together. Dear Lord, I am struck by your want to be with us and the lengths that you went to to be in relationship with this terrible person (laughs) and sinner who doesn't do things your way. But Lord, you have created a way to remove the boundaries and truly set us free for a life that is spectacular. And Lord, that is you that has done that. And you deserve a really big thank you. Lord, thank you so much for what you've done for us. Lord, you are amazing. We love you. And we thank you. Lord, please be with us as we leave our time together. Lord, I pray that the words that you've spoken into our hearts and into our minds this evening would come back and hit us again and would sit in our minds and we will be reminded of them through the week. That we would begin to live a life that is based on freedom that you offer, a life that you want for us. Help us to remember these things this week, Lord, and and be with us. We love you, Lord. Amen. Keep you inside of the grave. The enemy fought you, he tried, but he lost. You cannot be stopped. Told on the walls The 
the weight of our burdens, you carried it all. Our fears and our failures hang dead on the cross. You cannot be stopped. Mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Stand on your victory and shout out your praise. Miracle maker, mighty to save. Awesome in power, relentless in love. You cannot be stopped. Mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. I hope you're enjoying the sermon series, The Greatest Return, as much as I am. Thanks, Pastor John O, and thanks to the worship team for your amazing talents. If you have a prayer request or would like to connect with the church, please jump onto accesschurch.org.au and go to the connect form and someone from the church will be in touch. Otherwise, you can call the church directly. If Access is your home church, we encourage you to partner with us financially. You can find the details on our website or you can text GIVE to the number on screen. Bless you and we hope you have a wonderful week ahead.